Ned? Yeah, Ned got through training today well. So, again, the last tick in his um, concussion protocols prior to this weekend's game, and provided that he pulls up well from today, then he'll, uh, he'll be playing for us come Saturday afternoon. So does he, t he test that tomorrow, or is that a game time, game day decision? It's uh, depending on how he pulls up and we'll consult with the doctors with the, the remainder of the concussion pro protocols. Probably a check in tomorrow to make sure that he's, he's right to go. But um, all signs look really positive from training today. He's crashing in pretty hard. I guess he only plays one way. He does, yeah. He only plays one way and that's why we love him. He brings a certain energy to the team and um, yeah, love the way that he, he plays. We missed that on the weekend in terms of that, that forward presence and that hunt at ground level. So um, yeah, really hoping that he pulls up well and be great to have him back on the side this weekend. Tough to solidify a forward line this week. You and the, the new look boys look pretty good over there in the west. It's yep. A tough job to yeah, it is a good um, a good dilemma to have. I mean, you hear the best teams in the comp talking about depth in their squad, and we're certainly building towards that and want that as a club at the moment. So, um, good position for us to be in um, with competition for spots, particularly up forward. So going to be a really good discussion in the match committee after this around what that looks like because obviously Tex coming back from the side with Ned um, poses um, you know, uh, unfortunate selection issues for some guys. Is it, um, when you name it, just a debutant, is it, well, where do you stand on giving a player a run of games or is it, is it, is it too cruel to say in Roman's case to play one game and then, and then go out and stuff? Oh, I think I, yeah, it's, it's always a difficult one. Um, you know, we, we sit there and Ronan had played a great three, four weeks of SNFL footy prior to coming in last weekend and played his role really well for us. So it's, um, it's great for him to get a taste in his home state you know, with his family there. And um, yeah, we love to, to, to blood a debutant and then also, you know, where the opportunity is there for them to, to allow them to keep playing, which we have done with, you know, Sam Berry, um, Riley Philthorpe as well. Uh, and then there's times where, out of circumstance, we have to change the mix of the squad. So we'll, we'll have that discussion after this is a match committee about what the mix looks like this week. Well, guys like Sam stuck to need a rest at, at some point, given the first year in the system and just coming in from the start? Yeah, it's certainly something we're gonna, we have been discussing as a match committee around um, not, not just our young guys, but our whole, whole list, as we spoke about Tex last week. So he's now jumping out of his skin to come back in this week, which is, which is really pleasing. And then. You know, our first year players, a lot of them didn't play a lot of footy last year too, so there's that you know, um, cumulative load that they've now got that they didn't probably get last year, so we, we are mindful of it. Um, but our, um, to our strength and conditioning team's credit, their monitoring and wellness um, system is, is thorough, so we're, we're hopeful of monitoring when they do, if they do, start to taper off and we can adjust accordingly. How do you see your defensive unit? Obviously, Nick's said the ball coming in for Darling isn't entirely on them, but I feel like perhaps you were one, one big man short. Yeah, look, it's, it's easy in hindsight to say with that, you know, that probably 10 or 15 minute period where West Coast got on top and it, it did come off the back of some centre bounce dominance. So us as midfielders have to take some responsibility um, on making sure that delivery gives our backs the best chance. Uh, I thought after that we re regrouped really well as a, as a team and our backs did as well. So it was a matter of um, limiting that supply, but also the way that it comes in, which is largely due to the pressure up the ground that we can certainly control as, as mids and forwards to help out our, our young defenders at times. Have you seen Riley in the last couple of weeks? Probably not hitting the heights that we're used to seeing, but he's come up obviously against some pretty tough opponents. Have you assessed him? Yeah, look, and, and no different again this week. I mean, with Max Gorn this week and looking ahead with, with Nan Curvis into, into Brody Grundy. So he's, he's probably got the toughest month. Um, he might ever have had in his career with Nick Nat last weekend as well. So um, we ask a lot of our, of our big fellas, now Rucks in particular, um, and he's been able to carry a significant load for the footy club for a period of time now. So we're mindful of trying to keep him as fresh as we can and understand that the calibre of players that he's coming up against is, um, is really challenging for him. Um, what was pleasing on the weekend is he battled his backside off against Nick Nat and the mids at ground level did their best to try and nullify the impact of the dominance that, that Nick can get at times. So, um, but we were, we were pleased in a lot of regards with the way that the boys were able to fight it out and, and assist each other, really. Does Rob need to chop out at any point? Like, did you see that happening? Or? Perhaps that discussion around um, what load management looks like for everyone. We had it with Tex last week. We spoke about our younger players just before. Um, Rob's probably no different. So, um, but we'll manage our list accordingly, finding times where there might be a, an ideal chance to, to give guys a bit of a breather. In saying that, we've got the buy in a few weeks' time as well. So um, 
it's a, it's a balancing act, but um, that decision is not necessarily up to, to us as match committee. It's a discussion point, but our strength and conditioning team are, are really well informed in regards to loads and best opportunities for guys to, to freshen up. Have you got an obvious wrong replacement? Did you need a rest, or is someone dominating the twos? Or else Look, we've got a couple of tall guys in the team, um, so they can certainly, um, you know, we've got a number of ruckmen that have played that second ruck role in Frampton, Philthorpe, Himmelberg. Um, Tex has even played a bit in that role, so. Um, in the side at different stages and Kieran Strawn came in last year for his debut and he's been playing some really good strong footy in the SNFL as well so um, we're lucky that we've got some options in the, in the tall man department but um, at the moment um, yeah Rob's our man and has been doing a, a great job for us. I heard Tex say you chuck your toys out the cot a little bit when Nixie said uh, you're going to have a rest. How would you have gone if you're playing well and you know, yeah. leading the best affairs and Sando come up and said hey mate just sit this one out? Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting one because, um, and I'm reflecting on probably the way that I would have handled it, and I, you know, speaking to Tex about it, was you never want to put your hand up and say, I'm ready for a break, whether you come off a good game, bad game, or an, a mediocre game. Because um, why he's so successful as a player is because he just finds a way every week, whether he feels good or he doesn't feel too crash hot. So um, sometimes that conversation and decision making needs to be taken somewhat away from you. Or, you know, in, in both sets of hands so that it's not just left up to the player because you know, most players want to play every week. Um, so we took a long-term view with it and um, really happy with how he's feeling this week. Um, and he'll be jumping out of his skin to have a crack at the Ds this weekend. So what are the benefits for him? Oh, look, he's, I mean, he's, he's uh, 30 plus now, so he's played a lot of footy and freshens him up, allows him to be sharp um, around the contest. Because um, I think Tex, when he's when he is at his best, is that he's he's able to, to fly and launch at the footy. His follow-up works elite, um, and he's able to cover the ground um, better than most. So, um, not that he was labouring in that way, but it's a matter of just how do we keep him in that space. And sometimes it's it's you know um, being more proactive than reactive. So we took the proactive approach. I feel like Tim Kelly, if he got off the chain in that first half. Yep. Um, Obviously, you make corrective changes, and then he was quieter in the second. If coming up against him, midfield like Melbourne, Clayton Oldbu had about a thousand touches against you boys last year. Do you, yep. do you look at doing that, or, or putting a tag, or putting attention on from the start of games with midfield groups like this? Yeah, we certainly, we certainly can have that discussion and do as a as a mid group and match committee around what that might look like for us. Um, and last week, for example, they they got a pretty deep midfield. Uh, at the best of times, West Coast. So we spoke around what that might look like for us. Upskilled some guys. If we did pull the trigger on going to a Kelly, a Gaff, or a Redden, Sheed as well. So it was um, you know, in the second half we identified at half time that Kelly was fairly impactful, especially in that second quarter. So um, Sloane did best efforts to get to him around the ground at stoppage and and made him more accountable, which is what we wanted. So because often to take someone completely out and go and tag the opposition player can be beneficial from a stats point of view to that player, um, but also harm your, def your defensive system as a team a bit. So we, we try and balance that out and our mids in general try to be really accountable with the way that they play. So um, that they want to be a team that can, can be pretty honest going both ways. So we're, we're trying to build that sort of mentality and, and skill set in them. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's disappointing. I've seen the work that he's been able to do in pre-season and get himself to a point more recently where there was light at the end of the tunnel for him um, and unfortunately um, didn't work out the way that we all would have hoped, including Matt. So um, disappointing, but now there's a there's a clear plan for him around this is what's going to happen and this is the time frame that you're looking at. So hopefully uh, all goes to plan and um, we see some footy for Matt. Hopefully by the end of the year, it would be great. You can get him back for now, Oh, well, that's best case scenario, I'd imagine. We'll just wait and see how the surgery goes first and foremost. So. I'm no expert in that space, but always try and be optimistic with the players. Um, but we'll just wait and see how the, the surgery goes, what procedure exactly happens, and then what the, the surgeon indicates in terms of a return to play and time frame that he requires to, to build his rehab back up. How tricky a spot is it for him if he doesn't play simply this year, given he's in a, a contract year and there are big decisions for both parties to be made? Oh, look, I think there's a lot of water to go under the bridge in a lot of areas at the moment in terms of what the procedure looks like, what the return looks like, what the recovery looks like, rehab, and then there's external stuff with the contract as you touched on. So um, I reckon let's just wait and see what pans out over the next couple of weeks in terms of what comes out of the surgery and then we can make a more definitive plan with 
what Matt's rest of the year looks like for us. How does that affect players, Like you would have gone through it. I mean, your, your injuries was in your career was a yep. tough one as well. How does being in a contract year, being injured, affect the players' mindset? Um, it affects different individuals differently, to be honest. Um, and at the end of the day, you really just got to focus on controlling what you can as a player, and that's getting your body right as best you can. Um, it's staying engaged with the group as best you can, um, because as a footy club, they don't forget um, how you can play or what strengths you bring to a playing group. So um, that's what you've got to remind yourself of and control what you can control, which is yourself and your own body and your recovery. So that's um, what all players will always focus on, and, and he's no different. Do you need to get your hands on Matt Pock a little bit more through the guts? Oh, yeah, I've, enjoy minutes, I've, enjoy I've enjoyed having him uh, around the footy, and he's certainly shown, even on the weekend, some of his contests and his his ability to, to fight two or three guys off. Um, it's what we see him do and what we've seen him do at training. So that's why we're keen to work with him moving forward. Um, in what sort of capacity that looks like, we're still working through because we've seen it in, in bits here and there. And also some of his forward stuff last weekend was really pleasing. So finding that balancing act for him.